Hello and welcome back to another video. Now, after spending every single waking moment of my life editing the recent Game Change episode, which if you haven't watched, watch. I thought, hey, what's a video that I can do which won't take over 30 hours of editing? And then I remembered, oh wait, I've still got a Q&A to do at some point, so here we are. Now, in fairness, I got quite a few more questions than I actually thought I would, so I'm not sure how many we'll get through today, but if you want to see another one of these videos in the future, then be sure to leave any more questions in the comments, and I'll try to answer some more next time I get around to one of these. So, the first question comes from Ratman, who says, Hey man, I love your videos. I was wondering how you came up with your name. First of all, thank you. And well, I feel like there's a default answer to this, which is, I just picked two words and slap them together, but there's actually kind of a weird story behind how I came up with that name. So it started when me and my friends were probably about 14 at the time in English class in high school and for some reason the task that lesson was to create magazine covers for some made-up company. I don't really know how that was meant to further our education in any way but that's what we had to do. And for some reason, me and my three other friends who sat at my table all decided it would be funny if each of our magazines focused on a different area of facial hair. So one of my friends did beards, the second did mustaches, and the last did hairstyles. So that pretty much encompasses every facial hair area on the human head, right? Wrong. My magazine, as you may have guessed, was called Heavy Burns, <laughs> and pretty much just had a load of drawings of sideburns on it. Was I a massive fan of sideburns? No. Did I have particularly prominent sideburns myself? No. Was I remotely interested in sideburns in any possible way? No. But that's all that was left, so that became my magazine. And thus, Heavy Burns was born. And from there, it just kind of stuck around. The fact that I had to stand up and present my magazine titled Heavy Burns was just kind of hilarious. So that night, I went home and changed my Xbox Live name in an attempt to keep the joke alive. Because as you'll come to learn, my natural tendency is to hammer every single joke repeatedly until it's completely dead and no one finds it funny anymore. She called me a simp and left. You're a simp. You're a simp. Thor, Odin, simps. Ah, simps above. Thor is a fucking simp. And thus, Heavy Burns was born. And now, whenever you search for my channel, you're eternally cursed with looking into the eyes of tragic burn victims. You're welcome. Next are a few questions from Ben and Rose, which I'll try to get through a little quicker than the last one. They say, I really love your content. Thank you. Keep going. I will. Also, what's your favourite colour? Alexa, what's my favourite colour? I don't know what yours is, but mine is ultraviolet. Ultraviolet. How did you learn editing or where? Um, I made shit videos over and over again until I figured out what I was doing. Does your mother know you're watching a registered sex offender? Who is your favourite follower in Skyrim? Does Inigo count? If not, then Serana for sure. Why Heavy Burns? Mmm, see previous answer? How was that name created? In a fiery pit of I think I'm funnier than I actually am. Do you have any other hobbies besides making videos? Yes, but I don't really have time for any of them anymore. <laughs> I keep up with staying fit and working out, but that's about all I can manage at the moment. What's your favourite food? Oh, spaghetti bolognese for sure. I once was on a cruise with my family and we went to some fancy fine dining restaurant on board and I had five courses of spaghetti bolognese. Probably the most food I've ever ate in my life. Felix says, for the Q&A, you should tell us your address, the code to your phone and the code to your bank account, as well as your bank card details. Honestly, you don't want them. There's nothing in there. He continues by saying, Nah, just kidding, but jokes aside, I think you should tell us more a bit about what you do besides making videos. You may also tell us about what you like to do, maybe something about your personal hobbies, or shall I say, hobbits. You know, since you're making a guide about transforming Skyrim into Lord of the Rings. Ha ha ha. Sorry, hope I didn't cringe you out. To be honest, I would be surprised if you were still reading. Well, that's all my questions. I hope you use them. Well, Felix, I'm indeed still reading, and I'm in fact using your questions. What do I do other than making videos, basically? Well, not a lot at the moment. As I said before, I try to work out as much as I can, occasionally play the guitar, pet dogs, and take long walks on the beach. The last one was a lie. I haven't seen a beach in five years. Ragnik asks a couple of questions. What's your opinion on all the biggest and also effortless modding channels that do adult slash kinky stuff in their reviews? Uh, so I assume we're talking about MXR here? I mean, if you're not, then I genuinely don't really know who you're referring to, so I'll assume we mean MXR. And, in honesty, I enjoy his videos. 
I'm not too into adult mods myself, but no one can take away the fact that he's entertaining. And everyone's entitled to their opinion, don't get me wrong. And if you feel like his videos are effortless, then I'd probably just put that down to the fact that he's been making the same style of video almost every week for nine years. And he also now has a second channel with Genie, which just hit a million subscribers. So whatever you think of his content, the man is definitely dedicated and clearly has a high work ethic if he's been able to keep it up this long. What's your favourite Skyrim mods? I feel like this is a basic bitch answer, but Inigo for sure. Also, Clockwork was a really interesting experience the first time I played it. Forgotten City, of course. I Need. Legacy of the Dragonborn. Oh, and when I'm playing for myself, which is pretty much never nowadays, the Take Notes Journal of the Dragonborn mod is pretty much essential for me. I swear I've literally written full novels with that mod. But in fairness, there's so many good mods that I love, I think I'd have to do a whole video on that to properly answer that question. What's a mod that you want to see but doesn't exist? Oh, good question. I'd love to see a properly integrated survival mod where you can physically chop down trees, gather stones, other resources and build your own house physically like full Minecraft style. I know campfire can let you gather wood and things like that but I mean full swing at that tree and knock it down style. Is the YouTube algorithm good for you? Well, sometimes, I guess. Again, for some reason, the Dark Souls video has taken off more so than any other video on my channel so in that instance, yes but nothing I've made has ever went mental, so in those ways, no. But it's tricky to put it down just to the algorithm because I think it's important, at least for me, to be able to critically assess your videos and try to improve a little bit each time. And then maybe the algorithm will pick them up a little bit better. Can you control Fat Thor, Odin Simp, or are you just saying what he should do as a narrator? No one can ever control Fat Thor, not even Fat Thor. And finally, what are the future plans for Modospheres and game changes? I know the next episode is the Forgotten City and the Lord of the Rings game change is coming, but do you have any other plans after that? Well, ideally, I'd like to put one game change out every Sunday, but I know that's not really possible right now because they take too long to make. And as far as Modospheres is concerned, I'm still kind of feeling that one out and seeing what works. Do I continue to make short videos on one mod at a time, or longer videos once a week with multiple mods? I'm not sure, so let me know your opinions. Ragnik also says, Also, I can't stop watching your content. You're so goddamn funny, the quality is over the top, I simply love it. To which I say, thank you. And yes, I am very funny, you're welcome. And to finish off this video, we have a bunch of questions from Thor's simp queen herself, Liz, who asks, Who's your favourite Skyrim NPC? Personally, I really like Bandit number 4. Bandits 1 to 3 are quite disappointing, but 4 really hits the spot. Favourite faction in Skyrim? Volgahar vampires, because I'm a sick fuck. <coughs> Soulsborne or Elder Scrolls? I don't think I'm physically allowed to answer Soulsborne on this channel, so let's go with Elder Scrolls so no one leaves. Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones? Love both of them, but Lord of the Rings because that's what I grew up with. Also, Sean Bean dies with more dignity and doesn't get beheaded by a little blonde f Favourite meal, movie, song, um, Spagbol. All of the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit films, I will never pick a favourite, you can't force me. And straight out of Cyrodiil. Stop! You violated the law. It's been too long since I've seen a good draw. I'm just warming up, you pathetic worm! Remember the Emperor! Pets. I have a dog. Well, my dad has a dog, which I see every now and again, if that counts. I've also had two hamsters, but one ran away and the other fell down the back of the cabinet and died. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? Yes. Hotel? Trevago? Trevago Hotel? Can Fat Thor be redeemed from his simping ways? Yes, but only on Hallow's Eve under a red moon when the clock strikes 12. And finally, do you get to the Sim District very often? <laughs> Oh, uh, what am I saying? Of course you do.